Hello, my name is Kennedy, and today I want to show you how I deploy my websites, or at least some of them. Um, let's get right into it. Um, so, I guess we should first talk about uh, how I work locally. I work locally with uh, MAMP, uh, and I happen to have MAMP Pro, and I call it KG as my server name. Uh, so this is all running from my local files. So I can make changes here. Let's just uh, let's just add this in here. And then we can see in the title in the URL it says local, and then on the live site it actually doesn't do anything quite yet, right? Um, and what I'm actually using is GitHub um, uh, service hooks. So let me show you that real quick here. So if we look in GitHub and we go to settings, uh, we go to service hooks. I use the webhook URL, and you can see that uh, kinesgarage.com forward slash github.php. Uh, this file name doesn't really matter. Uh, well, I mean, it does in relation to whatever you call it, but just naming it GitHub doesn't matter. I just use it to, to keep as a reminder. Um, so what this what happens with this GitHub.php file is exactly this. So every time I do a git push, um, GitHub, it pushes the GitHub, and GitHub fires off that service hook, which in return just does a git pull. Um, it's a fairly simple process, and let me show you that real quick here and how that works. Um, and I guess I'll show you how I set it up. Um, in, in a few seconds here. So let's just change something obvious. Um, we'll just add an exclamation point. Um, and we see here in the title it's there, but once again on the live it's not there. So let's actually commit that um, status. And you can see I'm on the master branch, so let's commit that. Um, testing for video, it's a horrible commit name. Um, so now that we have that staged, let's uh, go ahead and push that. Well, let me show you this real quick. All right, so you can still see it's not there, and it's still there, right? You got the idea. All right, so let's go ahead and push that. So if we go back over to GitHub, we see that testing for video is now here. And if we go and refresh this, we see that that's there, right? Um, it's pretty cool. I learned this originally from like Jeffrey Way in one of the NetTuts Net uh, tutorial. Um, but recently I came across a process or I came across a need for um, trying to push to two different locations. I needed to push to dev.domain.com and just the regular domain.com. So this has worked for great for like making our testing environments. So I went ahead and created a um, just a subfolder uh, or subdomain called dev.kinesegarage. I'm hosting everything, everything on Media Temple, so this makes it really easy. Um, as you refresh, you see that um, this will get the exclamation point too. Uh, but this actually, there's actually nothing in here, and I'll show that to you in a second here. Um, so let's go to s log into uh, Media Temple here. CD, and I just created um, this folder just for now. And there's absolutely nothing in here. Um, so what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to uh, get clone. Actually, let's do this here first. So if we do git branch we see that I don't have any other branches. So let's create a new branch called dev. All right, so get checkout dash B um, dev. So basically we're creating a branch and checking it out. All right, so now let's go in here. Let's name this to dev, just so we are aware of what's going on. All right, and then if we look at our local, um, you see it says dev in here. And of course on the site it says it hasn't changed. So let's commit that and push that. So git commit um, uh, testing out the dev branch. Right. Let's push that. So since we're already on dev, we can just go ahead and git push. Um, and whenever, um, so git is smart enough where it's actually going to tell you everything you need to do. Uh, so you actually want to follow this instruction here because you do want to get push upstream uh, for the origin dev. Uh, so we just want to set that there. So next time we do get push, it automatically knows to get push origin dev. Um, just making your life a little bit easier. All right, so if we go to the live site, um, you should see that it didn't change, right? Um, which is awesome because it's only pulling in from master because that's the only thing it knows. Um, I didn't set anything up, but you know, master is the default branch, so that's the only thing it does know at this time. Um, so let's go back over to... Um, not that there, but uh, the server. Okay. So let's do a git 
get clone on here. Uh, let's get clone. Play type today. All right, so we're just claiming this repo here. And what we're going to want to do, we're going to want to change this name because it's going to pull. Um, I'll just wait a couple seconds to show you here. But yeah, I, I found this. I, I actually did a lot of research on uh, Google trying to figure it out, and I must have spent like six hours um, trying to push to dev and then trying to push to master. And there was a bunch of scripts written, and none of it worked. Uh, and then I came to realize, I realized after talking to John Britton, who works for GitHub, uh, how actually simple it is. Um, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's do ls here. So we see it's Canadian Garage, but we actually need to rename that to HTML. So let's just move that because this is how Media Temple works. Uh, and then we'll just cd into html um, and let's do a git status i already have git installed on media temple here i think media temple comes as a default so it says on branch master um, and if we go back here this is now its own independent thing because um, before you can actually append anything um, to whatever before dot kindred's garage um, and if it's no subdomain set up by media temple it'll actually just make it the default um, Point proven, right? All right, and so since we're still on master, it's still showing that. So what we want to do, we just want to do simply do get checkout dev, and it's going to pull in. Uh, so cool. So we're going to pull in dev, uh, right? Yeah, let's refresh this. Cool. So we see the devs here, right? And then if we refresh this, we still see that. We still see this. All right. So let's do. Let's go on our local host here, and let's do git checkout master, right? And then if we go over here, we see that this is still here. Um, and we'll just rename this to master as well. Is that how we add it on the other one? Um, yeah, okay. So we'll just put master just for the time being, just so we can know. Um, so if we do, let's just see what branch we're on real quick. Master, okay, so let's, get, let's commit that change. Um, Testing uh, master service hook. All right, let's go ahead and push that. All right. And then once again, we'll see that this is local, this is live. And if we go over dev, it still says dev. Um, and all that basically is doing um, is whenever GitHub is pushing that, uh, that Git, uh, this GitHub port here, it knows just to pull, just like how we just do get push. It knows to only pull from that branch which is on. So it doesn't necessarily have to be named dev. It doesn't. You can name it whatever you want. Um, so whenever you do get push and you're on the dev branch, uh, that service is going to fire, and it's actually calling um, both of those get pulls or it's fire. Uh, actually, that's you know what. I decided something. Um, It's odd that it worked because I figured out I had to set up two service hooks because that, that's what I had to do before. But maybe I was doing extra work when I was spending six hours trying to figure it out. Um, but I was pretty sure you had to do at dev that Kennedy's garage at GitHub because there's two different things. But maybe it's how Media Temple set up, and that's why you don't have to do that. Um, still interesting to know that you can push to several different domains through Media Temple. But if it's not Media Temple, I'm not too sure how that's going to work. I would recommend ha adding two of these in here. And then what's going to happen is when you push to master, uh, GitHub's going to fire both of these uh, service hooks, and it's going to know if it's any changes on dev or master, right? Uh, you can look this as, you can look this as if it's you're working with you know a, a coworker, right? And if you're working on master and he's working on dev, and you make changes to master and he does a pull, if he's working on dev, he's not going to get any your master changes because he's not on the master branch. Um, so it's just one way of looking at it. So, anyways, it's a very simple. Um, I guess I should just move it. Um, a very simple way to deploy sites, and I use this um, with a lot of my client sites and my friend sites and just side projects, and it just makes my life really, really easy. Um, I'm actually going to delete uh, this later because I actually don't use a dev on because uh, I have nobody else that really cares um, that that doesn't need to see approval before my site pushes. So I'm going to end up deleting uh, this subdomain. Um, and I just mostly just work on here. So I'm just going to revert this back here. Um, status. And let's do uh, git branch dash D. 
uh, dev, we just want to delete that branch and then just see it's gone and I'm just going to revert this change back so that's not there. All right. uh, bring it back. Horrible commit names. And then push. So that's all there is to it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel, please feel free to ask, and then I'll be more than happy to help you out. All right. See you guys.